Hello, my friends. Happy Sunday. So glad to see you again. And can you believe we are already to December 20th? Only five more days of Christmas. Have you been following along each day? Have you been doing your ornaments? This is today's ornament. And um, your coloring pages. One of our TVC kids told me that um, she is doing her ornament every day and doing her coloring pages and she's going to put it together and give it to her grandfather as a Christmas gift. Isn't that sweet? I thought that was a great idea and her grandfather's a pastor so I know he'll go through those ornaments with her and talk about those stories. We have learned so much about God's people and how God is with us all the way through, right? He's been with so many people. So the whole story leads, and Voskamp, the, the whole, it's called Unwrapping the Greatest Gift, right? And so the whole story leads to the greatest gift. And who is the greatest gift? It's Jesus, right? You guys knew that already. You don't need me to tell you that. You know that the greatest gift ever is Jesus, all right? And today, I bet you heard Pastor Jim talking about hope. You know what happens with hope? Hope comes from knowing the greatest gift. Hope comes when you know Jesus, all right? When you spend time with him. That's how you could have hope. There's a lot of people in our world who feel kind of hopeless right now. But when we have Jesus, we know we're going to get through. And as we've been reading through this book, I love that we read about Adam and Eve and Rahab and Jonah, people who made some kind of big mistakes, right? But God was with them. Even in their deepest, darkest days, he was with them. And then we read about some people like Noah and Ruth and Esther who had a lot of faith, but kind of a hard path, right? Kind of a hard path being all by yourself like Noah and being Ruth who had to go to a different land and take care of her mother-in-law and Esther who had to stand up to a king, right? But God was with them. They trusted God and, they were, and he was with them. So I love learning about all these stories along the way. We just touch on them and you guys can go and spend even more time with your moms and dads really reading in depth about these stories. So if you haven't, if you've missed some of them, go back. Go back anytime, even after Christmas. It doesn't matter. They're great stories that talk about the family tree of Jesus. So we are going to see who we're going to learn about today. Are you ready? All right, the verse is from Luke 1, 17, and it says, He will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. All right, and it says, God remembers. That's the title. Now was the time when all the miracles begin. Are you ready? I am so excited about this. If I had Mr. Chris here right now, drum roll please would be happening, right? All right, it said, After years of speaking to prophets, God fell Mm, for a very, very long time, for 400 long, long years, God's children looked up to heaven and could have heard a pin drop. So quiet. They're like, God, speak to us. God, speak to us. And he wasn't answering. It had been 500 years since anybody had seen angels, and it had been 600 years since Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego walked through the flames with a fourth blazing angel from heaven. Do you guys remember that one? Yeah. But then, all of a sudden, it sounded like hundreds of quiet years shattered, and God's voice reverberated loud in everyone's heart. Wow, that must have been an exciting time. There he was an angel. He appeared right in front of one old man, a certain wrinkled and gray priest named Zachariah. Have you guys heard of him? I bet you have. All right. A priest who was shocked that his name had been drawn to offer the incense in the holiest place in the temple. It was a special day that came around only once a year, the Day of Atonement, it was called, and that day when people celebrated being made right with God. Throughout a priest's whole life, his name might never be drawn to be the one to go into the holiest place. And once it was drawn, it would never be drawn again. This was a very, very special day for Zechariah. Zechariah, his name means God remembers. But someday Zechariah felt like God had forgotten him all Everyone else had the gift of a child, but not Zachariah. Zachariah had no little boy of his own. 
Not, no one to play with, no little boy to love on, to dream with. He did have a wife and her name was Elizabeth. I bet you guys have heard of Elizabeth, right? Okay. And her name meant God's promise. Elizabeth prayed with Zachariah that God would remember, that he would remember his promise of a child. You know what? That's what we need to do, right? Whenever we're thinking, I think God wants this for me, but you just have to keep praying and you have to keep praying. Sometimes we pray for a really long time, like Zachariah and Elizabeth. Sometimes things can happen really fast, but we should never give up praying. What more could anyone want than a miraculous gift of a child? And Zacharias and Elizabeth prayed to believe that God remembered and that he kept his promises. This is always the best way for miracles to happen. God meets us right in the place where it's hard to believe, right? Sometimes when we think like maybe we just want to give up. Maybe it's just we've prayed too long and, you know, it could be about anything. But sometimes we've prayed too long. I'm just going to give up. No, right when you're in that moment of starting to think maybe God doesn't want to answer my prayer, keep praying. Take one more step and keep praying. When we, when our believing sort of runs out, God's love always runs on. So when we run out, he fills us up and runs on. That's awesome. I love the way she said that. Nothing is impossible with God. We know that, right? This is what the angel declared. Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth would give birth to a baby boy who would be named, do you guys know? Do you guys know who it is? John. Yep. That's the miracle that they will get. God gives us grace and he graciously gives us one gift after another. He gives us breath and life. We've got that this morning, right? Have you thanked him for that? Just for waking up and having breath and having life, right? And he gives us each other. Have you looked around to your family this Sunday morning? I love having church together as a family and sitting and seeing my kids and my sweet husband and we all sit together. Sometimes we have to stop it because we want to talk to each other about it, right? It's like, it's so nice to have each other. And he gives us all of himself. Wow. The angel told Zachariah, who could hardly believe it, your boy, John, will be a man with the spirit and the power of Elijah. Wow. Do you remember Elijah and the fireballs that fell straight from heaven? The time of miracles was here. This is what the angel said. John will help people get their hearts ready for the coming of the greatest gift ever. That's really all we have to get ready for Christmas, our hearts. We need to get our hearts ready to welcome Jesus into every part of our lives. And guess how you best get your heart ready for Jesus? You come to him just as you are. All right, now, have you guys put up Christmas decorations, maybe inside, maybe outside? Have you made presents or bought presents? Have you thought about what you're gonna cook that day? All those kind of things are, we think that's preparing for Christmas, but all we really need to prepare are our hearts, right? That's the only thing, and God is there ready to help us, but we just have to prepare our hearts for Christmas. The other stuff is all fun, and I sure do love doing it too. I bet you guys have made some cookies. But yeah, the other stuff is all secondary. It's all off to the side, fun stuff. But preparing our hearts for Jesus, that's the most important. It's like your name has been drawn and you get the miracle of Christmas. Have you ever felt like that? The Christmas, is it is a miracle, right? And you get it. Because you know Jesus, you get that miracle. You get more than just proof that God exists. You get the gift of really knowing God's presence. That is a great gift. You always get the greatest Christmas miracle. You get God with you. That is a great Christmas miracle that any of us would get God, right? God gives himself as the greatest gift and he doesn't keep any truly good thing for, from you. Because the greatest gifts, well, they're not things at all, are they? The greatest gifts are not just the stuff that's wrapped that we could wrap in a package. Those are fun gifts, but the greatest gift is Jesus. God never ever withholds the greatest gifts from you. 
Jesus. Jesus is all good and he's all yours. And this is always your miracle, your greatest gift. And the best thing is you could always have as much of Jesus as you want. Can you feel the miracles starting already? All right, I love that. I love how she writes, you could always have all the miracles, all of Jesus that you want. There's no limit. He never says, oh, excuse me, I'm a little busy right now. He's there as soon as you call on him. He is there. So I thought we would talk just a little bit about the Christmas story. You know, Mary and Joseph, their hearts were prepared because an angel came down. Do you remember when Gabriel came down and talked to them and said, don't worry. But they trusted God and look what happened. They got to be the parents on earth of Jesus on that beautiful day in that manger lay baby Jesus with a gorgeous star over the top. And then there were the shepherds out in the fields. Can you see these little guys out in the field with their sheep? I love thinking about them because it makes me remember that the shepherds were the lowly ones, right? They were the ones that um, they weren't really popular. They weren't rich. They weren't famous. Just kind of like us, right? We were just like the shepherds. But yet those angels, I love these guys, those angels flew down and they made it go from darkness to bright light and shine so beautiful with the message proclaiming that Jesus was coming and the wise men coming from so far away to honor and love baby Jesus, right? I wanted to read just this last little thing to you guys um, because it reminds me of, you know, how Jesus came for everyone and he's available to everyone and he's ready for you at any time. It says, he shines for the wise men whose boughs are so deep and even for shepherds so lonely with sheep. He shines for young Mary and girls just like you and Joseph and men whose hearts are kept true. He shines for the hurting, the lost and the weak. He shines for all who are willing to seek his love and his mercy so strong and so true. Whether you're weeping or leaping, he's there for you. He shines for all those willing to say Merry Christmas in this very, very special way. So I hope you guys will have a wonderful Christmas. I hope that you will spend it with your family, that you will um, go through our Advent study, go see our Christmas in July, all those things on YouTube, um, Bible stories with Bella, go over the Christmas story with your family and think about what it means that Jesus came for us. Enjoy Christmas. Enjoy celebrating God, sending the best, the greatest gift ever, and that is Jesus, just for you. Think about it, just for you. I love you guys, and I hope you'll have a beautiful Christmas. You know, I don't like Christmas to stop, so next week we're actually going to do one more fun Christmas activity, and it's a TBC Kids favorite. So be ready for that. Look for more coming each day this week, but I love you and I'm so glad that I get to say Merry Christmas to you. I love you and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.